Alright guys, um, I'm just gonna run over why I personally think ARMS is better than Fury for PvP. Um, Fury has made somewhat of a comeback with Mastery and a few more balanced talents, but at least for what I see, ARMS is still the uh, obvious choice for Arena or competitive one-on-one -on -one or something like that. Uh, first thing that's gonna come up is hit cap. Um, as arms with 5% hit, you will hit any player except Night Elf, a Mage, or a Rogue. They have an additional 1-3% to chance to miss, as well as a Frost DK spec. So, generally speaking, you won't miss. Um, with Fury, I haven't looked it up, but I had 11% hit, and I was still missing on things like uh, Hunters that were Draenei or Torn or whatever, and I should always hit them. Uh, just whites though. It might be 27% as well for that, but I really don't want to look into that because uh, Fury's rage starved as is. Um, Fury, if you get dodged, you kind of are SOL. Uh, arms, you get an overpower, so if your mortal strike gets dodged, um, you really only lose something like 17% damage from what it would be and save a ton of rage on it, so it's not as huge of a loss. Uh, if something like Bloodthirst or Heroic Strike gets dodged as Fury, you're kind of screwed for your burst. Um, Fury gets Rage Starved. Uh, without the charge opening, you're kind of reliant on your Shout and actually landing a white hit to do it, as well as your movement actually costing Rage instead of generating it. And then um, Intercept. Heroic Fury is nice, and the way some people look at it is it's the same. But it's really not. If you have an intercept on a uh, 20 second cooldown if you're specced and 4 piece PvP gear, it's going to be 20 seconds. And even though you can Heroic Fury that once on the 30 second, after you blow your Heroic Fury, it doesn't reset to the old cooldown, it resets to 20. So you're still waiting 20 seconds for your next movement unless you can get out of combat. Which I guess as a Night Elf you could Shadow Meld charge, but uh, that's a pain in the ass to do. Um, you're still stuck waiting for all of your stuff. Hero Fury is nice as well because it removes your roots and whatnot, but it's still not worth it to be locked down without a way uh, out other than that. Um, transitions from Sword and Shield as arms are a lot easier than Fury. Uh, you have to be in Berserker for Raging Blow, and Raging Blow really only does damage if you have both the main hand and offhand equipped. Um, you can go Sword and Shield as Arms and do a lot more damage than Sword and Shield as Fury, which is really nice if you're getting the shit beat out of you, but other than that, I don't see the need. Uh, Blade Storm's utility, even though it's less damage, is kind of, I don't know, it, it's a good debate. Uh, Death Wish increases my damage by 31%, which is huge damage, but Blade Storm does, uh, it will be... 150% weapon damage on the first swing, and then your whirlwinds will do 75% weapon damage once they implement the hot fix, and melee swing through it, which will put you at about 80 rage, um, 100 if you had any rage other than exactly what was needed for your blade storm, unless you cancel it. Uh, blade storm also makes you immune to stuns, snares, fears, everything but a disarm, and is a freedom as well. So it's really nice to get away from people. Uh, I prefer its utility in 1.1 or minute 15 cooldown over 2 minutes, but, I mean, that's personal preference. I would say Blade Storm's better. Uh, Throwdown. The only thing Fury has close to a stun is your Intercept, which requires range, is a 20 second cooldown. You can Heroic Fury it, but it's your movement. Uh, that's a problem having to use that to lock someone down. Uh, Throwdown's just a hard stun, which is amazing for arms. Uh, Mortal Strike does 5% more reduced healing than Furious Attacks. What can happen, though, is if you get a Whirlwind and it decides to proc, you can get Furious Attacks on a bunch of people, which, if you're in BGs and doing something where there's a bunch of people, could be more useful. But if you're hitting that many people, Bladestorm and Sweeping Strikes would be a lot more beneficial. Uh, Tactical Mastery makes you keep... 75 rage when you switch stances instead of 25, which is huge. Uh, you can dance between anything without almost any cost to your rage. Uh, you could leave it at 50 and use a talent point elsewhere as arms. And come 85, you will be able to spec into it as fury, but right now you can't. 
and I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it. Um, taste for Blood. You can still reflect and hit Overpower at the same time. If you try to reflect his Fury, you can't use your uh, Raging Blow. Um, everything with Arms seems to chain together nicely. The bonus to crit damage as well as, you know, you have Impale, 20% more crit damage. Um, procs up Deep Wounds. You have a Mortal Strike buff to crit. Fury doesn't have that. Uh, you rely almost entirely on RNG for it. Um, second one in Blood Craze, uh, right now, is Amazing Heals. Uh, I find myself being able to tank certain classes without taking any damage. Like, I tried to fight a Prot Warrior who was fairly equally geared, and I lost no health by the end of it. Um... Fury, you gain 5% damage on kicks. Uh, it's not huge. And you have... If you blow your 5 and 2 minute at once, you can pretty much global people with low resilience. But I haven't had a problem doing that with arms either. Um, it's still nice. Uh, okay, um, one of the major points is Raging Blow and Mortal Strike. They are relatively the same damage as far as I can tell. Uh, for comparison's sake... I'm, they're both non-crit, uh, I find my Mortal Strike critting more often than my Raging Blows do, but that's beside the point. Uh, Mortal Strike is weapon damage, and I'm just going to use all the top end weapon damage for this to make it simpler, which for me is a little over 3k times 137% plus 439. Uh, if you put it in Lambs to the Slaughter, which off Mortal Strike would give you 30%, would make it around 6k. Uh, Raging Blow is 156% weapon damage with all of my mastery, and all of that combined is about 6,500. Uh, Raging Blow is also a pain to use. You often have to blow your Berserker Rage to get it up, whereas Mortal Strike, you can just charge MS. Um, Mortal Strike also has a bunch of abilities that scale with it. Uh, the Juggernaut will increase its chance to crit. Two-handed weapon damage scales from the Arms Talent Tree and... Everything else you can get um, makes it so they hit about the same and MS is on a 4 second cooldown, which helps. Uh, some of the ways it scales might be a little bit off in this, this is rough math, but the more percents you have going into an ability, the more things like trinket procs will scale up for them. So my Mortal Strike special ability hits like a truck compared to a white swing. Like if a white swing crits a target for 4k, I'm generally going to land a 10k Mortal Strike. Um, that's just my general rule. That's how much damage it does. Uh, where Fury, if I land, in at least in PvE, a 6k white swing, I'll land about a 12k, 8k raging blow, which on resilience and whatnot, they average out to about the same. Uh, the unfortunate part is you can't force raging blow to crit, crit with recklessness, and you can end up with that... Um, other things to be aware of, you can do Recklessness, Heroic Strike, and force your Insight proc for the next Heroic Strike to crit, as well as using cooldowns and pretty much kill people, but I would rather not die than land a kill. Um, it's really personal preference. I see arms going even further ahead with uh, Colossus Smash than in Fury for PvP, but, I mean, if it's a battleground, you might want to be able to cleave three targets, whirlwind, cleave, pop your cooldowns, and then kill a healer. But I still see arms staying ahead almost entirely.